Learn the true secret origins of Heartless, the brand new serial killer supervillain who is gunning for Dick Grayson. All this and more in the pages of Nightwing Annual 2022 number one. Let's hop on it together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so the first story in this three pack actually does a really good job throwing you for a loop. You think we're going to be treated to a story from Alfred's point of view as we're introduced to a butler who has come to Gotham City to work for a wealthy family, but they end up completely pulling out the rug from under us and instead give us the origins of Heartless. The butler in question is named Gerard Chamberlain and the wealthy Gotham family are called the Lyles. The Lyles' son is a young boy named Shelton who is currently exhibiting all the telltale signs of a young psychopath right down to torturing small animals. His parents have no idea what to do with their son and as such they basically pawn him off on the butler who isn't terrified at all, quite the opposite, he is intrigued. Gerard actually sees a lot of himself in the young boy, and that is because Gerard is actually a serial killer who fled from England and killed the real Gerard Chamberlain so he could assume his identity. The plan was to get close to the Lyle family, ingratiate himself to them so that he would be put in their will, and then he'd basically just kill them all and collect the money. But plans quickly changed when Gerard realized that Mr. Lyle was a cruel SOB who would never put him in his will. Mr. Lyle actually made his money in the insurance game. Well, he made his money by denying people's claims just so you know exactly what sort of D-bag he is. With all this newfound time on his hand though, Gerard saw fit to try and fan the flames of young Shelton's psychopathy. He would take him on very macabre field trips to the butcher shop, to the zoo, and on one very fateful night to Haley Circus, wherein both had front row seats to the deaths of Dick's parents, the Flying Graysons. Now, for most young kids, seeing two people die in a happy family torn asunder before your very eyes would probably be traumatic, but not for little Shelton, though. In fact, this moment would go on to be the most defining event of his young life. It's what finally allowed him to speak and open up. He was just that overjoyed and elated. It's also the moment, too, that Butler Gerard would basically end up superseding the Lyles as Shelton's parents. But here's actually the best twist of all. We've actually seen Shelton Lyle before. He was the bully that Barbara and Dick stopped from beating up that kid all the way back in the early issues of this series. Yes, that's right, he went from Henry Evans in The Good Son to Johnny Lawrence in The Karate Kid before Dick would one day beat the crap out of him and knock out a bunch of his teeth. And as we hear from Gerard, having his teeth replaced would just be the beginning of a long series of surgeries that the boy would have following his parents' death. A death that, of course, Gerard masterminded himself. Of course, you still might be wondering, what's with the heart game? gimmick. Well, it seems that as Gerard sabotaged the Lyles helicopter, he did so without making certain that young Master Shelton wasn't on board. The kid almost died and was only saved at the last second because he got a heart transplant from his dead father. With Mr. and Mrs. Lyle finally out of the way, Shelton and Gerard could begin their great work. They had billions of dollars at their disposal and Shelton wanted nothing more than to become a supervillain, replacing his weak human body with cybernetic enhancements. All things that could make him faster, stronger, and more dangerous so he could continue to indulge in his favorite activity, and that is stealing hearts. But not just any hearts either. Heartless had to steal the hearts of loving families, meaning that he just didn't kill one person, but destroyed whole families like the Grayson family was destroyed. Because he really is just that messed up and just that much of an asshole that this is the only way he can get his jollies anymore. And Gerard is positively thrilled by young Master Shelton's progress. In fact, the two share a weirdly sweet little moment wherein Gerard is ready to give Shelton the heart of the dead blockbuster. Shelton stops him right before the surgery to say how much he loves him and cares about him and says that he's the only person who's ever truly understood him and ever really nurtured his passions and that with Blockbuster's giant mutant heart, he'll be able to run all of his cybernetics long enough to finally take down Nightwing once and for all. Now, that's where the main story ends, but because this is an annual, we got two smaller little backups. The first one actually focuses on Haley, Dick Grayson's brand new dog, who, as we learn, just chews up everything in Dick's apartment while he's gone. We get a fun little super pet style story wherein Haley imagines herself as a superhero rescuing both Dick and Barbara from supervillains, but in reality, she was just tearing up the place more. Dick is ultimately fine with losing his TV and his game station and everything else, but once he realizes 
realizes the dog tore up the lingerie he was going to give Barbara, he decides to enroll the dog in obedience school. And the last story in this three-pack actually focuses on Nightwing as a teacher and a mentor. John comes to Nightwing asking for help controlling his powers. Following on from another Tom Taylor story in the pages of Son of Kal-El, wherein John hurt someone during a battle and the media and everyone else quickly turned against him. What's particularly fun and interesting about this story is we get to see Dick as a teacher essentially do the complete opposite of everything Batman did with his own training. After all, Dick is more trusting, he's more willing to give compliments and help build people up. He also understands that John is a Superman, doesn't need so much to worry about not getting hurt in the heat of battle, he needs to worry about not hurting other people. The story also ends on a nice note too, wherein we see that Dick isn't completely deriding everything that Batman taught him, he just knows now that as a fully three-dimensional person and adult, he doesn't always need to do things Batman's way and that he can create his own better way, and yeah, it's a nice little story. And so that was Nightwing Annual 2022 issue number one, everybody, and I gotta say, I really ended up enjoying this one. Lord knows Taylor made us wait forever for the big reveal of who Heartless actually was, but I must say, for once, the wait was honestly worth it. I had actually theorized that Heartless could very well be a character we had seen previously, I just didn't know we had seen him that previously in a flashback. The character's origin and raison d'etre is pretty interesting, too. He's a dark reflection to Nightwing and Batman, but not in the way you expect him to be. Basically, they were both created on the same night when the Graysons died, and while Nightwing is all about building up good, positive versions of stand-in families, Heartless's whole gimmick revolves around destroying families just because. It's honestly a pretty damn good dichotomy. I know a lot of newer DC villains don't seem like they have legs or are going to last, especially Batman-related villains, but Heartless, I think, might just be able to do it. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. This was good stuff. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time everyone, I've been Cape Joel and I will see you next time. Bye bye